All right, here are your solutions to the review. Let's see if I can focus in here. So the key to this page is knowing how to factor. If we can factor, then it's pretty simple. So if I look at the numerator, let's see if we can make this work. There. So if I look at the numerator, the first times the last, I get negative 24. And then the middle number is negative 10. And the two numbers that would fit here are negative 12 and 2. Now, this is going to require another step to divide. So we're going to divide by 8. Now, this is actually going to require another step because these need to be simplified. So the number that goes into 12 and 8 is 4. So when you divide by 4, I get 3 over 2. When I divide by 2, I get 1 over 4. Now I can come back here. And then I'm going to slide the 2 in front. So it's going to be 2x minus 3 and slide the 4 in front, it's going to be 4x plus 1. So that took some work. The denominator is the difference of squares. So we're going to square root each one. So that's 2x plus 3, 2x subtract 3. Then we eliminate the common factor, and we have our answer. So it's 4x plus 1 over 2x plus 3. Try number 2. So the first number times the last number that's negative 30 and negative 13. So the two numbers there are negative 15 and 2, not 10 and 3. So negative 15 and 2. And again, I have to divide. So I'm going to divide by 3. This one will be a little simpler. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. And then slide the 3 in front. And that's 3x plus 2. The denominator, a simple diamond. So those two numbers are negative 5 and negative 2. And then eliminate, and you have a 3x plus 2 over x minus 2. Expand it just a little bit. Multiplying, same thing. We're going to factor first. So you're going to factor out a 3x. Uh, simple diamond, negative 1 and negative 9. And then eliminate the common factors. And my answer is 3x over x minus 9. Factor what you can. So the denominator, I'm going to factor out a 2x. And a difference of squares, x plus 7, x minus 7. And then eliminate what you can. And when you eliminate everything on top, we're still left with 1. And then in the denominator is x minus 3 and x minus 7. Dividing, so we're going to factor. Then we're going to change it to multiplying, and then we're going to flip this one. So we're going to factor out a 3x. See if I can do this right. 2x minus 3. This, that will go to the top. The top is a simple diamond. Uh, the two numbers are negative 12 and 2. And then eliminate what you can. And you're left with 4. Uh, 2x take away 3. And then the bottom x minus 12. Let's do that again. So factor what you can. So I'm going to factor out a 2x. Change it to multiplying. This might take a little bit of work. So let's do that here. 3 times negative 15. That's negative 45 and 4. So that's 9 and negative 5. And then divide by 3. So 9 divided by 3, and that's going to go on top. Um, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then the 3 will slide in front and be 3x minus 5. Uh, the top, x squared take away x. So when you factor out an x, you're left with x minus 1, and then we cross out what we can. So x plus 3 and x plus 3. The x makes the x squared an x, and then the x and this x cross out. So we're left with 3x minus 5, and then 2x minus 1. 
now we're adding. To add, we need common denominators. So the first fraction, I'm going to have to multiply to make it the same as the second fraction. To do that, I'm going to factor first. So x squared subtract 4 is a difference of squares. So now I know that I need x minus 2, top and bottom, to multiply it. And then that's going to be my denominator for my answer. And then 2 times x plus 3x is 5x. And 2 times negative 4 is negative 4. And there's no number to add to it. So there's your answer at the end. Here, we need to factor to see what we need to do to make the denominators the same. So it's positive 2 and positive 1. This is positive 3 and positive 1. So this needs an x plus 3, top and bottom. This one needs an x plus 2. I'll just use this as a fraction line. So we have x plus, order doesn't matter, x plus 3, x plus 2, x plus 1. So there it is. And then 4x plus 5x is 9x, and then 12 plus 10 is 22. All right, turn the page. That was working and simplifying. Oh, we got some more subtracting. Again, I need common denominators by multiplying. So I'm going to take the first, and I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x plus 2. Then I'm going to take the second. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x minus 5. Now we have common denominators. So I have x minus 2x. That's going to be negative x. I'll just put the answer here. Uh, and then 2. Now when you subtract a negative, you're going to add 10. So it's 2 plus 10. And then you have your answer. All right, we're going to multiply by uh, x minus 3. And x plus 1. Now the denominators are the same. Uh, x times x is x squared, and x times x is x squared. So they eliminate negative 3x and negative x is negative 4x. And you have your answer. All right, solve equations. So for some of you, this is tricky. So we really got to make sure you try it first and be a good listener as we go through this. So uh, x cannot be 0 because that makes the denominator 0. We need to make the denominators the same. So for the first one, I'm going to multiply it times 3. For the second one, I'm going to multiply it times x. And then the last one doesn't need to change at all. So now they're all 6x squared. So I'm left with 3 and equals 1 times x plus 1. Solve it, and you get the answer 2. So that's a good answer because it's not 0. OK, try the next one. We need to make the, first of all, look at the denominator again. The only number x can't be is 0. We need to make them all. So we're going to multiply by x, and I'm going to multiply times 5. Now all the denominators are the same. So we have 1x, and then distribute 5x plus 10 plus 1, and then that's what I'm going to solve. I'm going to subtract x. I'll put the answer here. Then I'm going to subtract 11. And then I'm going to divide by 4. So the answer is negative 11 over 4. All right. I need to make the denominators the same. When you factor this, this is negative 4 and negative 1, which is to tell me that this needs a negative 1, x minus 1, and then the denominators are the same. 
So we have x minus 3 minus x plus 6 and then x minus 1 and that's what I'm going to solve. So x minus x is 0. Negative 3 subtract 6 is negative 9. Add 1 and you have the answer. So x is equal to negative 8. Just one second about what can x not be. So positive 4 and positive 1. Those numbers would make a 0 in the denominator. Uh, x cannot be 0. Common denominator, I need to multiply this by 2. And I need to multiply this by 2x squared. Now they're the same. So we have x minus 4 minus 2 is equal to 2x squared. And that's what I'm going to solve. This is negative 6. This is now a quadratic equation because of the x squared. So we're going to make it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract x and add 6. So now it's equal to 0. We're going to factor this 2 times 6 and negative 1 and come up with those two numbers. So I have x minus 4 and x plus 3. Then I'm going to divide by 2. And those are my answers. So one answer is negative 2 because 4 divided, oh, not negative 2, but positive 2. And the next answer is negative 3 halves. Done. All right, number 15. Any common denominators? So if you don't see a denominator, it's 1. So I'm going to multiply by x minus 1 to make all the denominators the same. So negative 5 times x and a negative times a negative, then 1, then x squared. This is negative x squared, and a negative times a negative is positive 1. So it looked like it was going to be a quadratic, but the quadratics eliminate 1 plus 1 is 2. Subtract 2. Oops, what am I doing? Ah, whatever. So subtract 2. <laughs> I'm making it, I don't need to make it equal to 0. Let me rewrite this again. Uh, subtract 3. <laughs> Long way around this, we'll get there. Uh, and then divide by negative 5. So a negative divided by negative is positive 3 over 5. So there's your answer. And what could x not be? So if I look at the denot, the only number x cannot be is positive 1. Done. Okay, let's do some graphing. This is a reciprocal. So the first thing I'm going to write down is a equals 1, h is 2, and k is 3. So remember, this is like opposite day for the h. So the domain, x cannot equal 2. The range, y cannot equal 3. That's your hk. And the m behavior is what k is. So it's going to 3. And then we'll transform some points in asymptotes. So there's the m behavior. Now, what two points are we going to change? 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. The h affects the x-coordinate. So we're going to add 2. So 1 plus 2 is 3. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. To the y-coordinate, we're going to go times 1. That doesn't change anything. So we're just going to add 3. So that's 4. Add 3. That's 2. So we're going to put those on our graph, 3, 4 and 1, 2. Then the asymptotes we're going to put on. Our asymptotes are h and k, so they're at 2 and at 3. And then we curve from there. So this curves up forever and then curves along and then down forever and then curves along. And you have your graph. So a is negative 3, h is negative 1, k is 2. That's your domain and range and your end behavior. The end behavior goes to k. Then we're going to transform two points, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1 from the parent. 
1 over x. So we're going to subtract 1 to the x coordinate. We're going to multiply and then add. So 1 times negative 3 plus 2. And again, negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3 plus 2. So that's going to go on our graph 0, negative 1, negative 2, 5. Our asymptotes are h and k, which are negative 1 and uh, 2. And then we're going to curve through this, curve through that, and we have what we need. All right. Next, we're going to factor these, and then we're going to fill out the table and fill out the graph. So the domain, the only number x cannot be is positive 1. We have an x-intercept at negative 1. We have a vertical asymptote at 1. We have a y-intercept. So plug in 0 for x, and you're left with 2 divided by negative 1. A horizontal asymptote, we can go power term divided by power term. That's 2. And the end behavior is that number. So as x approaches infinity, the function goes to 2. As x goes to negative infinity, uh, the function goes to negative 2. Now the graph. So put down what we have. So we have an x-intercept at negative 1. We have a y-intercept at negative 2. Uh, we have a vertical asymptote at 1 and a horizontal at 2. So we know part of the graph here. So this part of the graph we know. We need a point up here. So I'm going to plug in 2. So the first x value to the right of the asymptote. So I'm going to plug in 2 and see what answer. 2 times 2 plus 2. 2 take away 1, and I get 6. So 2 and 6, that's good enough for me. And then up, and then curve, and follow. All right, number 19. We're going to factor. So when you factor out a 4, and a simple diamond, negative 4 and 1, x squared take away 1 is a difference of squares. So this is x plus 1, x minus 1. And notice that it does simplify. Before I simplify it, the two numbers x cannot be are positive 4 and negative 1. Then I can simplify this. And I'm going to write that down. So there is a hole. What did you cross out? What's the opposite number, or the 0 there? That's negative 1. To find the y coordinate, you plug in negative 1 here. So I'm going to do that down here. So negative 1 minus 1, and then negative 1 minus 4. So I get 4 times negative 2 over negative 5. That's negative divided by negative, which is positive 8 over 5, a little more than 1. Uh, the vertical asymptote is at 4, so x equals 4. The x-intercept is at positive 1. The y-intercept, when I plug in 0, it's negative 4 divided by negative 4. That's 1. The horizontal power term over power term is at 4, because 4x squared divided by x squared is 4. Now we're going to go to our graph. There it is at 4. Uh, the vertical is also at 4. The hole is at negative 1 and 8 over 5, which is a little bit more than 1. The x-intercept is at positive 1, or the y-intercept is at 1, and the x-intercept is at 1. So you can kind of see how these follow along here and how it's going to rise and follow along the horizontal over here. We need a point over here to curve, so I'm going to choose 5 and see if that gives me a point that's on the graph. So uh, 5 take away 1, that's 4 times 4, that's 16. It's a little bit hefty. Let's try uh, 6. So 6 take away 1, 
I can do it. Five. <laughs> Five times four is 20. So it's 20 divided by 2, 10. I can find that on my graph. Let's do that one. 6 and 10. And then I can actually curve through it. Otherwise, I couldn't. And there it is. If you tried 7, 8, they would keep being lower and lower so that you could fit them on your graph. Too. So that's perfect. Oh, end behavior. As x approaches infinity, the right end behavior is the horizontal asymptote. So it goes to 4. The left end also goes to 4. Done. All right, so your page. We're almost there. Last one, right? Make sure it didn't fool it. Look, fine. So last one. Factor? No. I'm going to find the oblique. Do you notice that the power on top, is, the degree is exactly one bigger than the bottom? I can use synthetic, so I will. I'll also factor this out. I'm going to have to eventually factor it out which is fine, positive 3 and negative 1. All right, so when I divide, it's negative 1. Ricardo Diaz, please report to the health office. Ricardo Let's Diaz, divide this out. Office. I don't care about the last one. So this is y equals uh, x plus 1. The domain from the denominator, x cannot equal negative 1. The x-intercept is negative 3 and positive 1. The vertical asymptote is at negative 1. The y-intercept, plug in 0 for x, and you get negative 3 divided by 1. Let's do that. And we'll look at the end behavior after we graph it. So uh, graph here, start at 1 and go up 1 over 1. Go. Vertical is at negative 1. Um, ba -boom. X intercepts at negative 3 yep. and at positive 1 and the Y intercepts at negative 3 and there we go. Now you can see the end behavior, the right end is up and the left end is down. And there you go. All right, let's try that again. So negative 2 into 1, 3, and I don't care. So again, it's going to be 1, 1. So that's y equals x plus 1. I'm going to factor this again so it's simple. Positive 4 and negative 1. No hole. So the domain x cannot equal negative 2. The x-intercepts are at negative 4 and 1. The vertical asymptote is at negative 2. And the y-intercept, plug in 0, and you have negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2. So I'm going to put that on my graph. So I have negative 2, I have negative 4, I have positive 1. Again, here's my oblique asymptote. Start at 1 and go up 1 over 1. The vertical is at negative 2. And then you can draw. And notice again the end behavior. The right end is up and the left end is down. Our last one. All right, 22 here. Let's, I'm going to factor first. So you're going to factor out an x, factor out an x, and then I'm going to keep factoring. Sometimes you could have two holes, right? But there isn't. So there is a hole. This does eliminate. Um, so there is a hole at zero. To find the oblique, we're going to use long division somewhere over here. 
So x squared plus x, I only need the first two terms. So I'm not even going to write the rest down. I just need the first two terms. So x squared goes in x cubed, 1x. And then subtract, and you get no remainder. So that's 0. So it's just y equals x. y equals x. Now, if you plug 0 here for the y coordinate, you get negative 2 divided by 1. So it's 0, negative 2. There's a hole. There is no y-intercept. That's because there's a hole on that axis. The x-intercept's at negative 2 and 1. The domain x can't equal 0 and negative 1. So 0 is the hole. And negative 1 is the vertical asymptote. So I have negative 2 and 1. And negative 2 for the y. I have a vertical asymptote at negative 1. And then the line y equals x. So start at 0 and go up 1 over 1. Oh, there's a hole too, right? So that's at 0, negative 2. Sorry, why did I not draw that like a hole? This is a hole. So hop over the hole and go. And you have your graph. So again, the end behavior, the right end is up and the left end is down. That's it. All right, Mr. G Math over and out. Till next time. You got this. I believe in you. You're going to do great on the exam.